Welcome back to the Arsenal Pass YouTube channel and today the first in a video series all about getting you ready for Welcome to Wraith Farewell Drafts. If you haven't heard about these series already, these in-store events that you know you can go and participate in uh, over the final weekend of January, then head to fabtcg.com. There's actually a link below in the description uh, that you can check out which details exactly what this, you know, these in-store events are. But effectively, you know, we're bidding farewell to Flesh and Blood's first in-print set. Welcome to Wraith. So this is the first in the series, as I said, which is going to talk about some of the basics of Welcome to Wraith Draft as you're going to be heading along to these events. Of course, with Welcome to Wraith being the first set, you know, a lot of us didn't get the opportunity to play the set. You know, maybe you came in at Monarch or, or Tales of Aria. And so Welcome to Wraith Draft, you know, either in the next few weeks or when you head to one of these farewell events is going to be your first time drafting Welcome to Wraith. So this is the first in the series, as I say, which is going to talk about some of the basics of Welcome to Wraith Draft. You know, what you need to know to, you know, to succeed in Welcome to Wraith Draft. And then we also have four other videos, one on each class, shorter videos, just talking about how to draft those classes, you know, key cards, uh, strategies to win, things like that. So anyway, let's get into it and talk about Welcome to Wraith Draft. And before we get into the basics of Welcome to Wraith Draft, I do also want to let you know that up on the Arsenal Pass Patreon page, we do have a Welcome to Wraith pick order guide for draft uh, that is available to all of our patrons. That basically details, you know, when to take cards, priority of card orders, some of the key cards you want to look out for in each class and generic. So a bit of a cheat sheet, if you will. But anyway, let's talk about it. If you don't know about draft at all, then I recommend you go and check out our sort of our Art of Draft podcast that we did a few episodes ago. Again, I'll put the link down in the description if you're looking for that. But we did a full podcast on, you know, the ins and outs of draft, how to sort of improve at draft and, you know, some of the real key concepts of draft. But otherwise, I'm going to talk about Welcome to Wraith specifically. So, of course, just like any other draft, 30 card deck, uh, you're going to be drafting your equipments separately from that. So, you can have 30 cards in your main deck, plus your any equipment that you draft. And that's really important. You can't have less than 30 cards, but you can play more than 30. Although in Welcome to Wraith Draft, I would say most of the time, you're going to want to play 30 cards plus your equipment. So you have access to any of the, the four heroes, Katsu, Dorinthia, Reina, and uh, Bravo as tokens, and their token weapons that come with them. So don't worry about those if you don't see those in the packs. Uh, there will be tokens available for you, as there is with every draft in uh, Flesh and Blood. Before each game, it's important to know that you can pre-board, you can change the cards in your deck. So... You might have 35 playable cards. Maybe, you know, uh, you drafted a Bravo deck and you're playing 30 cards that you feel are really good. But you've got access to five other cards. Maybe they're like ultra defensive cards uh, and you're coming up against a, a Dorinthia and maybe you have a defense reaction in that sideboard. Well, before the game starts, once both heroes reveal their heroes, so both players reveal their heroes, you get the opportunity to change up your deck, change some cards uh, from the ones you've drafted from your, your draft pool. So maybe you get an extra defense reaction there, etc., etc. So... Those are just a really few key things to know about draft. But as I say, go and check out that Art of Draft pod if you want to know more about draft. But otherwise, let's get into talking about Welcome to Wraith specifically. Before we go into how to draft the set, you know, sort of key considerations, things you need to know, cards to take, I want to talk a little bit about the makeup of the set because it's really important to know this information, uh, the pack contents and the set contents, because it's going to give you some really good information about, okay, what is my deck probably going to look like in terms of makeup between generics and class classes, uh, class cards in particular. So in Welcome to Wraith, as a set, we do have four classes. If you've played Tales of Varia, you know that there was three heroes, three classes in that set. In Welcome to Wraith, we have four, as we did with a lot of the original sort of sets of the game. So generally, you're going to have eight players at a table, and you're going to probably have a split of two, two, two. Uh, two of the of the classes so pretty even split generally this won't always happen because of how you know the cards can be distributed our players draft it uh, and we'll get onto that in a minute about how you can sort of use that to your advantage but that's kind of how it's going to look like and then if we look at the actual set contents itself there's 132 commons there's 48 rares there's 15 super rares which if you're not familiar with super rares those are no longer in print for newer sets but they're effectively a step down from majestics we then have 10 majestics five legendaries and one fable which won't need to worry about that one too much unless you get really lucky on the day and, and you do open a fable and you know take that card and run to the bank. And then we look at pack contents. So another sort of important thing to know that's going to help us in our sort of draft strategy and how we look at drafting this set. Within each pack, we're going to have a token, which we're going to take out when we open the pack. We're going to have four generic commons. So these are, can own, these four cards can only be generics. You can have seven class uh, commons alongside those four generics. So 11 of the pack is going to be made up of commons. And those can be a mix of the four classes. So, you know, you could have four of one and then one of each of the other, making up those seven. Or you could have two, 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 one, for instance. And then we're going to have a rare. And then we're going to have in another slot, we're going to have a rare, a super rare, or a majestic. Again, this, these both can be classes, uh, class rares. They could be, you know, um, generic majestic, for instance. 
And then we have our equipment slot. Every pack has a piece of equipment, which is important to know. You know, if you get past 14 cards and there's no equipment in the pack, well, you know the person to your right took a piece of equipment. So there's some really important sort of information you can sort of glean from knowing what's in a pack uh, so that when it comes around and, hey, there's only three generic commons in this pack uh, that have just been passed. Well, yeah, my opponent, my the sort of person to my right to take in a generic common, I know that. So some information we can start to use as we get into the draft. And, and we'll talk about that when we talk about how to draft. Welcome to Wraith specifically. In the last slot, you're also going to have a, a foil, a premium foil. So these can be for any non-token rarity. So it could be equipment, could be majestic, could be common, for instance, most likely going to be a, a common generic or class card. Some stats that are really interesting in Welcome to Wraith and are going to inform a little bit about what the set is doing and probably what you're going to see in your draft. So generics make up over one third of the set. So while there's generics and there's four classes, the generic cards themselves actually make up over a third of the set contents including 43% of the commons. So 43% of the common cards in this set are generic, which is gonna tell you a lot about maybe how you want to start your draft and what your deck maybe is gonna look like because commons are gonna make up the bulk of our deck. 25% of the rares are generic. It's really important to note as well. It's a bit more even in distribution there as opposed to the commons. Of course, we have generic then plus our four classes. So around just under 20% is common, uh, sorry, is rares from any given class. Then your 25% is generics. The last thing I want to talk about before we get into, you know, some of the hero specifics or I guess how to draft Welcome to Wraith is that every hero kind of has their own key principle of how they want to play. And this looks different for each of the heroes. Of course, we do have four heroes. And I want to dive into a bit about what that looks like. So in future videos, we are going to be going over each of the classes in detail. One video per class coming out just as we head in this lead up to the Welcome to Wraith Farewell events. But I do just want to give a quick overview for those, you know, maybe just digesting this video before you head off to the Welcome to Wraith draft event, or if you just want a bit of a, a quick, you know, low down on these heroes. So first of all, we have Bravo, our guardian of the set, and Bravo's really all about his keyword crush. So it's about big attacks. It's about having lots of blues and, you know, resource cards to be able to pay for those big attacks. We've got some things that cost five, six, seven uh, to be able to play. And also about supporting the Anathos weapon as well, which can really come in as a big heavy hitter. Dorinthia, our warrior of the set, she's focused on attacks with her Dawnblade weapon. You know, really thinking about how she can give additional attack or uh, other, you know, positive buffs to that weapon, either before combat with non-attack actions or during combat with those tricky reprise cards, those attack reaction cards. Katsu, on the other hand, the ninja of the set, he's all about going wide. He's about lots of, you know, smaller attack actions, uh, utilizing the dual wielding weapons, the Kadachis, to chip in damage and get, you know, bits and pieces over top as well as comboing cards together on a chain. That's really what Katsu is all about. Reiner, uh, maybe one of my, probably my personal favorite in the set, and the reason for my, my love of Brute, I think, uh, is Welcome to Wraith Draft in particular. Very much about efficiency of trading cards. You have the Romping Club, which is a really efficient weapon. And then, aside from that, Reiner is really about setting up hands that, uh, you know, one or two cards, three or four cards, that make it really difficult for your opponent to use their hand in an efficient manner because of Intimidate. So that's really where Reiner sits, and that's just a bit of an overview of the four classes in Welcome to Wraith. So what about how to actually draft Welcome to Wraith? Well, there's a few things that sort of come into this, and I'm going to break these down in a few different steps. And I mean, where best to start other than the start of the draft? So there's really a few things that you should consider when you start to look at your pack one, pick one. So you know, you crack open those first, first 15 cards, and you're looking at which card you're going to take the first pick of the draft. A few things you can look at. The first thing I personally start to look at is the generics. So generics are really important because as we know, they're a big chunk of the set, as we talked about earlier. And taking a generic early, so maybe I first pick a generic, what that's gonna allow me to do is stay open, which I think is something that's really important. You know, I'm not taking a class card immediately. I'm gonna take a generic card and that allows me to then just see what happens, see what class cards come to me. You know, maybe to my right and then immediately to that person's right, they're really big on Ninja and Reinar and they're passing a bunch of Guardian cards. But if I take a Brute card early and then I start to commit myself to Brute, I could end up being cut from my right and just not get a good deck together. Whereas, you know, if I take some of these generics early, you know, maybe I see you know, a Sink Below, a, a Razor Reflex, something like that. I see these generics and I take those early, then I can stay pretty open and allow uh, what comes to, to me from the right to be what I pick up. On the other hand, powerful cards are really important as well. So while taking that generic route could be, you know, really important and allow me to stay open, the other thing I could do is just take the most powerful card in the pack straight away, whether that's a generic, whether that's a brute card, whether that's a guardian card, whether that's any of the other two heroes, uh, or a piece of equipment could be my option as well. So 
by taking the most powerful card in the pack, what I'm doing is I'm potentially setting myself up to be a bit more narrow, but really important to remember, I don't have to play that card. So maybe, you know, pack one, pick one, I take a, a really powerful Guardian card, but then the person to my right ends up drafting Guardian and I don't see much more Guardian cards. That's okay. I don't have to play that card that I drafted in that pack one, pick one. I'd like to, it's a powerful card, but you know what? I took that card and it's a bit of a risk. Uh, if it paid off, it would have paid off in a big way. But that's okay. I just move into another class and, and take things. So how to start the draft and balance between maybe taking something like a generic or taking a really powerful class card. I think those are the two lanes you want to be in and welcome to Wraith Draft. And you know what? You don't have to play that pack one, pick one. But if you take the safer, safer uh, sort of route and you find a really nice generic and pack one, pick one, you're probably going to play that every time. So it's really about weighing up the pack. And uh, this is where pick orders and sort of understanding which cards, you know, the that can be important for any given class, are uh, really nice to know and help you decide what to take in a pick one, pack one scenario. So with that in mind, what cards are we looking out for early on in the draft? Well, if we're thinking about generics, you know, that idea of staying open and, and being ready to take whatever comes to us. Some of the cards that I'm looking for early, you know, picks one, two, three, four, and five, if I'm looking at taking generics, I'm thinking about cards like Scar for a Scar Red. Fantastic card, gonna keep me open, goes into basically every, I think I'm never gonna not play that card, so that's gonna go in every deck. Razor Reflex Red, that's an interesting one. I'm probably going to play that in three out of the four decks. I'm probably going to find it very difficult to play it in Bravo, but it still keeps me pretty open, right? Because it goes into three of the four classes, uh, whereas, you know, a class card only goes into one of four. So that's another one. Snatch Red, a card that's going to go into basically any deck I play. Sink Below Red, uh, even Sink Below Yellow. These cards are very efficient, good defensive cards. They have an upside ability in enabling me to put a card to the bottom and draw another card, you know, filter a card through, which can be really important. These are cards that I would look for early uh, in particular. There's, there's a few more. Uh, and if you want to see more about these, you can check out our, our pick order guide. And when we talk about our class videos, we'll go into some of the key cards for each class as well. But these are the things that I'm going to look out for just generally because they're probably going to go into any deck that I play. On the other side of that, we talked about power cards. So what are some of the power cards that I'm looking for? Well, these are cards that are really going to be game winners for me. I don't just want to take a middle of the road card, you know, like a blue sort of class card outside of Bravo is probably going to be pretty insignificant to me. I'm probably better off just taking one of the generics in the pack as long as they're reasonable and playable and you know hedging my bets or even maybe the piece of equipment most of the equipment in welcome to wraith is really strong but power cards this could be majestic maybe something like a crippling crush and bravo i'm definitely happy to take that first pick very you know less than 50 percent chance i end up playing that card probably but the if i do the ceiling on it is so high that it's going to really reward that pack one pick one or maybe i get a second pick for instance and i take it other cards, you know, I'd be looking at red sort of win conditions, uh, you know, in Brute, this could be something like a um, Smash Instinct red, it could be something in Warrior, uh, like a red Warrior's Valor. These are the sort of cards where, you know, I could hedge them in pack one, pick one. Again, if we don't play them, not the end of the world. When we talk about how to draft Welcome to Wraith, one of the things I can't go past, something that I alluded to earlier, is equipment and the importance of equipment. I think probably in Welcome to Wraith draft, equipment is at its most important in any draft format that we've had so far. And that's really because of the sort of dual utility of the equipment. Class equipment can both defend and have an effect. Uh, we have generic equipment that defends and defending is very good in this game. Plus you have a few pieces of utility generic equipment like Goliath Gauntlets that are just fantastic. So one way I like to look at this and, and phrase this to people is take a, you have two Iron Rock. Maybe I draft an Iron Rock Howl and an Iron Rock Gauntlet during the draft. I'm starting at 10% more life than my opponent. That's 22 life effectively that I'm starting at versus my opponent because that piece of equipment is always available there. Whenever my opponent tries to push damage, uh, whenever I need to block something up, that is always gonna be there and available to me. One of the other great things about pieces of equipment that defend, and we have a few of these in Welcome to Wraith with the generic Iron Rod equipment, plus class equipment that can also defend, is that they can help you soak up sort of break points. So break points, of course, really important in Flesh, uh, in flesh and Blood. Think about something like Snatch. Maybe the opponent comes in with Snatch on the end of a chain, and that is representing not only damage, but potentially getting them a card to put into Arsenal. If I have to throw two cards at that to defend it and, you know, block it out so they don't get that card into Arsenal, well, I'm down I'm down two cards, and I, maybe I don't have a turn after that because they came in with an attack prior that I blocked with. But if I'm able to defend with one card plus one of my pieces of Iron Rot equipment, you know, a three defense plus that Iron Rot equipment, then I get to save that card in my hand and use that on my turn, maybe even just to come in with my weapon. That's still really important because it's either taking a card from their, their hand on my turn or it's pushing damage. So another reason those pieces of equipment are so strong, but also the utility. So if we think about cards like Goliath Gauntlets, if we think about one of my personal favorites, Hardened Crossstrap, Snapdragon Scalers, 
These effects are really powerful, so powerful that we've even seen these cards played in Blitz and Classic Constructed, uh, notably with, with Snapdragon Scales and Goliath Gauntlet. These pieces of equipment have big value in Welcome to Wraith Draft. Hardened Cross Trap is worth a pitch card, a yellow pitch card. That's, that's massive, right? Snapdragon Scales, that's going to allow you to have go again. You think about cards in other sets where we have to play cards just to get go again, right? Things uh, like Lead the Charge and Arcane Rising. So the value placed on these pieces of equipment is actually really high. And if I'm thinking about where I'm drafting these in any given draft, some of these I'm taking pack one, pick one. Goliath Gauntlet, Hardened Cross Traps, Snapdragon Scales. I would happily take these pack one, pick one. I would even take a piece of Iron Rot equipment in a really weak pack, uh, especially ones where the alternative equipment slots are pretty weak. So Goliath Gauntlets, for instance, uh, is really strong in the arm piece. But, you know, a hardened cross strap in the chest piece. But if I'm not going to get those, maybe an Iron Rot chest or a uh, Iron Rot gauntlet would be pretty serviceable as well. So that's things I look for. In terms of other things about equipment, you know, you've got the class equipment as well, which are really strong. Not only do they do that sort of defensive piece we talked about, always able to defend, help on breakpoints, they also have utility. You know, you've got the, uh, the, the brute piece, which allows you to get extra resources. So almost a hardened cross strap and an Iron Rot chest in one. Yes, please. Uh, you've got, you know, you've uh, the breaking scales for Ninja, and, and the list goes on. And I've put these up on the screen here so you can see them, but really efficient pieces of equipment. I tend to not take these pack one, pick one, because, you know, just that principle we talked about, it's not a generic, it's a class card. And I think as far as class cards go, they're probably not as high a ceiling as I want. So unless the pack is really, really weak, I'm probably not pack one, pick one in these. But you know what? I'm I probably if I'm in Ninja, then this is really high priority for me to take a breaking scales, for instance. So, and we'll talk about these these class equipment and their specific classes and how much how much value you should probably place on them as we get into it. But overall, equipment very good. You want equipment, you want to draft it. You're probably going to need to draft it high, and that's something to keep in mind. Signals signals is a really important thing in draft, just in general. Whether you've played other TCGs draft, whether you've played other sets of flesh and blood draft, like Tales of Aria, Monarch, maybe Arcane Rising. Maybe even you've played Welcome to Wraith before, but haven't thought too much about signals. They're really important things. Signals, uh, you know, what the person to your right is telling you is open. So say we take our first five cards. We take a couple of generics because they allow us to, like we say, stay open. Then we maybe hedge on a brute card we think is strong. Oh, then we get a guardian card that looks really strong. We take that. And then we get our, our, our fifth pick. And there's four or five really good warrior cards in there. Wow, what's happening here? Why is there so many good warrior cards in this pack? Well, we know about pack distribution, and this is where we can use it to our advantage. So we know that five warrior cards is about the maximum we could expect to see. You know, four, four warrior cards, let's say. Maybe not five. Maybe there's four in the pack. You know, we know that there's seven generic uh, class cards. Maybe one of the, the cards in this foil as well. Or maybe it's a rare, because we know those are separate slots. So seeing four cards, well, that tells us that probably, probably a warrior card has not been taken from this pack. And that's a, that's a big signal. So potentially downstream of us, or sorry, upstream of us, where people are passing down to us, they either, you know, have not moved into Warrior yet, or they don't want the Warrior cards. And that's a really important thing for us to be able to read. And we can only read that if we know a little bit about pack distribution, and we're observant. We're looking at what's in the pack. Okay, so I pick up the pack. I've got my, you know, at this point, 10 cards left in the pack. Click through. Cool. There's two generics left in common. Okay, so two common generics have been taken. I go to the back. There's, there's four class cards left, and, you know, a common, and three of them uh, Warrior. And then there's also a rare warrior card. Wow. To me, that's a pretty big signal. So these are the sort of things I'm looking for when I talk about signals. And in Welcome to Wraith Draft, I think signals are pretty easy to read, especially if you, you know the pack distribution. Pack distribution, of course, is not always going to be exact because it's seven class cards. It's not exact numbers of each class. But you can total these up. You can total up the generics. You can you know, garner a few pieces of information that are really key when you're drafting Welcome to Wraith, or in fact, any draft in Flesh and Blood. Staying open. Talked about this already, but I want to just bring it together and talk about how to execute on staying open. This doesn't mean that you only take generic cards for the first pack or the first six or seven cards. Not at all. What staying open means is that you're allowing yourself to move into a class that is going to be open or a hero that is going to be open. And the best way to do this is, of course, taking generics because those cards are probably going to be able to go into almost any deck you play. We, we had a few examples before where like a Razor Reflex, for instance, might not go into Bravo, but Scar for a Scar, every deck. Sink Below, every deck. Uh, Snatch, every deck can easily go in there. So these sort of levels of generics are really easy to take and say, okay, I've locked in one of my 30 cards, done and dusted, and their power level on those cards is, is pretty good. Then you move through into some cards like we talked about, Razor Reflex, Pummel, uh, Raging Onslaught's another great sort of generic that's probably going to go into almost every deck you play. So 
you're hedging your bets. But out of the first five or six cards, I don't need to take five or six generics, especially if I'm taking weaker generics. Like I don't want Yellow Demolition Crew particularly. It's a card I want to stay away from. So if that's in the pack and that's the best generic, well, let's look at a class card. I'll just take the best class card. And in the end, if that class ends up being open, fine, I'll play it. And if not, then I won't play the card. So let's say we get to pick seven in the draft. We have three generics, uh, two of which will go in any deck. One that says a Razor Reflex is going to go in three different decks. And then we've taken a Brute card and we've taken two Guardian cards. Uh, that That's fine. Um, and then we're at, we're at pick seven now. So pick seven comes around and we're now reading signals that, okay, actually, yeah, Guardian looks like it's really open. So the opportunity cost is, you know, I'm going to lose out on this Razor Reflex probably. But if I'm in the right class, I'm going to get more than paid off for that uh, early on, you know, in this pack and then into pack two. Because I'm now going to cut all of what's coming. On my right so that guardian really dries up and i'm probably going to get guardian cards back my way in pack two and then we know we're going to get guardian back in pack three because it's the signal that we've been been told so the staying open is a really important concept and and one of the best ways to do it as i say is taking a mix of generics you know a few class cards that are powerful especially when there's no good generics to take taking equipment we talked about the importance of that already and if i was to say one of the like the main takeaway from getting into welcome to wraith draft staying open is probably going to pay you the biggest dividends i would say uh, in in this set the next thing to understand is, okay, well, what are the signals that I'm looking for? Like, what are the power cards? Like, how do I actually stay open and then capitalize on staying open? And we're going to dive into a bit about how to draft each of these classes and, and the key cards you want to look out for and how to start assembling these decks once we get into the class videos. The last sort of concept I want to talk about and how to draft Welcome to Wraith is switching hero. So sometimes, you know, we, you do the right thing, you stay open early, uh, you get signal that Guardian's open, and then all of a sudden we get to pick 12 or 13, um, and none of the, the four Guardian cards wield, or maybe, you know, pick 10, or we get into the very start of pack two, and there's just no Guardian cards coming our way. So there's a couple of things we can do here. First of all, we have to weigh up. Can we actually change class? So, of course, you can have, end up with 45 cards because of the three packs, uh, and you're going to need to play a minimum deck of 30. So what you need to understand, first of all, is how many dead cards would I have if I tried to change into another hero now? How many equipment plus how many Guardian cards are sitting here in my pool that I just can't play? Now, if I'm already at the start of pack two at like 10, 11, 12 cards, I probably can't change. I'm probably too committed if I've already taken, you know, say eight guardian cards, two pieces of equipment, and then sitting there with five, five generics, uh, especially if one of them is something like a pummel that probably can't go into, you know, say a warrior deck, for instance, very easily, then it's going to be very hard for me to change. But if we've kind of adhered to that idea of staying open and, we, you know, we've got maybe six guardian cards, we've got five generics and a couple of pieces of equipment. I'm probably in a position where if Guardian really has dried up early in pack two, you know, I take a take a couple of generics and then all of a sudden there's no Guardian, but there's a ton of Warrior and there was a few Warrior in pack one. Well, maybe I'm in a position where I need to change class. And this is probably the hardest concept to understand in, in any draft, I think, in any draft form of Flesh and Blood, but particularly in Welcome to Wraith because of that perfect balance of four classes. You're really trying to, what you're trying to find is you're trying to be in the seat that has maximum two players but ideally you're the only player at the table drafting it. And that won't happen that often, but sometimes it does. And when it does, you want to be the one player drafting that single class. So it's a, it's a tough balance and this is probably the hardest concept, but I would say what you're trying to look at when it comes to deciding if you should switch hero is how committed are you already versus how open are you? And of course, the more open you stay in the earlier picks, the, the, you know, the greater ability you're going to have to switch into a class and really take advantage of it versus, you know, of course, the earlier you commit to that class in pack one, the harder it is going to be to switch. And that's something that you've just got to weigh up and it, it comes draft by draft. But of course, the, the more you stick to the fundamentals we've talked about here, the easier it's probably going to be to be able to switch if you need to. So that wraps up the Arsenal Pass introduction to Welcome to Wraith Draft in preparation for these farewell events. I personally can't wait to get out to these events and play them. Uh, I know I've signed up for two already. I'm looking to try and maybe squeeze in four if I can over the weekend. Might be a tough ask, but hopefully the local stores here are going to be able to line them up so that that works out. Uh, I honestly just cannot wait. I love Welcome to Wraith Draft. I probably like Tales of Aria more in all honesty, but I know that for a lot of people, Welcome to Wraith is their favorite and I do think it is a fantastic format. So hopefully these fundamentals we've talked about here will help you on your way in these farewell events. But if not, if you want to know more about the classes and how to draft each class, we are going to dive into these. So we do have four more videos coming on each class, one on each class, you know, shorter format videos talking about key cards, strategies to draft, and basically just how to build these and go about winning games with each of the four classes in Welcome to Wraith. Other than that, up on the Patreon page for Arsenal Pass, we do also have a full pick guide. So a bit of a cheat sheet on cards you should be looking out for, which generics can help you early, 
when to take class cards, uh, how you should rank them against each other, things like this. You know, it's not a, a be all and end all, but it's a really good sort of uh, one pager if you're looking for some ideas on where you should and shouldn't go uh, for any given class or early in a draft. Other than that, we'll see you in the next video where we start to talk about classes and welcome to Wraith Draft. Mm -hmm.